Well, hi there. We're back again. 100 Cups Colombia with praise be to almighty hopefully the last cancer video so when I left you the last time um, I was about to go and get the uh, a colonoscopy where they specifically tattoo you on the inside um, so that they know when they come in with the laparoscopy they know where to do the cut and shut yeah so um, colonoscopies are always wonderful things luckily I was uh, unconscious for this one but uh, once again you know marvelous doctors look like George Clooney you know Colombian George Clooney and his team of attractive nurses uh, once again gave me the but uh, let's just leave that there so the colonoscopy were tattooed up uh, I asked them to tattoo a smiley face in there for the surgeon so I'll, I'll have to check back with the, the, the surgeons on that one so 16th of August the big day uh, they decide to do the surgery at 7 o'clock in the morning which means you have to be in the hospital by kind of like, you know, half five, six o'clock in the morning, you do your check-in uh, and you have to take somebody with you. And that's fine, it's kind of cool actually. Um, it's particularly cool when you get to take your buddy Carl down with you. Um, Carl is a, is a is a an interesting lad. He's ex British Army, I believe. Carl was a sergeant. So, you know, I think having somebody military with you gives you that brutal realism um, when you go in, and there's nothing you can do but laugh about the situation because there's that wonderful black sense of humor going on yeah so it's you know 6 30 in the morning uh, you know they stick the old doodah in the back of your hand and i've still got a little scar there they stick the old doodah in the back of your hand for the 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 anesthetic and then you know this this whole floor of this hospital is dedicated to uh, operating theaters there must be at least half a dozen of them in there so they wheel you in and um, there's my wonderful Christina, my wonderful surgeon who I can't say enough wonderful things about uh, Christina. She is quite literally uh, a lifesaver. There was another surgeon there and I'm sure he was a very nice man. But I can't remember his name, but, you know, many thanks to him as well. And, uh, well, they, they, uh, what they do is, is they get you into the old uh, crucifix position. And the nerves start to kick in. Yeah, you're kind of going, well, this is it. Here we go. And uh, as you're starting to get into the into the the thoughts of surgery, the next thing you know is ding 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 little little little. They're playing Leonard Skinner, Sweet Home Alabama, on the sound system, and you're kind of like, well, that's taken me out of it. You're kind of laughing that you know. How much of a redneck must I look that they've decided to bang on some Leonard Skinner? But luckily, um, the next track of all things was uh, Aha, Take On Me. So this is getting more, you know, absurd theater by the moment. And uh, I'm starting to relax and that song finishes and as the song finishes and you're on the back with your arms out and you're looking up at the lights of the operating theatre, 
I see the images of my mother and father and it's quite bizarre that the sun has just come out behind that cloud as I mentioned that um, and my mother and father were they were the age of when I probably spent most time with them so you know I guess I was about 17 16 17 18 you know and and, and, and such a bizarre experience to, to, such a joyful bloody experience to have them looking down from above because you kind of know whatever happens it's going to be okay yeah? which, is, which has been a kind of theme with this from the very beginning that um, when you have a touch of faith um, that's the joyful thing is is you know it's going to be okay because this is not uh, an eternal realm this is just a visit and after the visit if you've done your job properly you might get the joy of carrying on into the other realm and so with that we're out yeah we're out we're under and uh, Apparently six hours go by. Um, you kind of come out of it and obviously being doped up to the eyeballs. I'm not too entirely clear about. I suppose by now it was like one o'clock in the afternoon. Carl had said, you know, the surgery had gone on. Supposed to be five hours and it had gone on for six. But that's all good. Um, so they wheel you up to your room on the 10th floor and you get this beautiful view of the north of Medellin and you're kind of going well sheesh this is kind of fancy and then um, after that it's just a consistent flow of um, another younger George Clooney doctor a selection of very attractive nurses auxiliary nurses, um, cooks, cleaners, physiotherapists and, and, and this goes on 24 hours a day every 25 to 30 minutes somebody comes into that room jabs you with something takes your blood pressure takes your heart rate you know but every time they come in, it's just that little, little, you know, moment of joy just to have these people around you. And then um, another very interesting experience I had, because what what this what this laparoscopy does, and and because it's your colon and it's up near your rib cage, what it does is it puts pressure on your lungs and then the swelling of your colon puts pressure on your lungs as well so it's very uncomfortable so yeah you're either lying on your side or if you're on your back you've kind of got to learn to take these deep breaths and the, and the first couple kind of hurt but by the time you get to the fifth one you're kind of feeling you know the pain goes away and you know i remember now it, it on the first night about two o'clock in the morning you're kind of suffering a little bit yeah and and you're feeling a little bit down and I picked up my phone and I, I think I wrote that I was that I was tired and not feeling great and then I, I kind of dropped back off to sleep with my phone in my hand and social media is a strange thing yeah we, we criticize it a lot but as I'm in this kind of half doped up phase of lying there with my phone in the hand, I can feel it going bzz, 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 bzz. You know, just every second, because I, I hate turning the volume up on these things. And I could just feel it buzzing away. And I don't know, you know, maybe an hour later, I'm finally kind of conscious enough conscious enough to, to lift this phone up and I see so many messages from people yeah so many 
uh, wonderful little notes and wishes and likes and and when it's two o'clock in the goddamn morning and you can't breathe and you're feeling down I can assure you that that is such a lift um, that you wouldn't believe it so everybody who did that I can't thank you enough in fact I can't and I'll repeat this again because I know I like to repeat things. All of you have just been wonderful through this. So anyway, it's the next day and we've still got our man Carl. He's still there. I think Carl did about 48 hours in the end, the first 48 hours. And you know you've got a good friend when you pass him your piss bottle and as he takes your piss bottle, he lifts his leg and farts. And that's how you know that that's a truly manly friendship, you know. Um, and once again, Carl, don't know what I'd have done without him. Don't know what I'd have done. Just the man, nothing phases the man. He just carries on, always good humoured. If you ask him for a packet of picking where there's original I'm joking about where there's originals and he comes in with a pack he's got he's gone and got a packet of where there's originals you know how how good is a friend that takes your plastic pot of piss and gives you a packet of where there's originals <laughs> anyway anyway back back to the the reality of the situation I'm in this hospital for five days, yeah, and it's just this constant flow of, you know, all these, and it's funny because, you know, you're old enough to see that all these girls are, are, you know, they're in their early 20s, and the doctor comes in, and he's maybe 28, um, and then the student doctor comes in, and she's 22. And I said, I said, you're the tiniest doctor I've ever seen. And then I went, oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. So a little bit later, you know, because you know how young women are a wee bit neurotic. Aren't you girls? That's maybe just a wee bit neurotic. So, you know, eventually she came in a day later and I said, you're not the smallest doctor I've ever seen. I said, you're the toughest to, to take that on at your age, I said, I said, you're a tough, bloody tough cookie. And I hope she took it all the right way because that's, all of these people have a incredibly difficult job to do, dealing with people who are suffering on a daily basis. But I hope that, um, with my particularly silly nature, you know, I kind of said to myself, um, it's not sufficient on my part to accept these people caring for, for me. I have to attempt to make them laugh on a daily basis. So I constantly come out with nonsense, like uh, what's the classic, Chow Pescal, and oh, here's another, oh, it's a Boston Terrier. Oh, it's Mora. Mora. Don't interrupt my video, Mora. Don't do it. Anyway, so, so, um, <laughs> here she comes. Anyway, so, um, you know, it's, it's from Tuesday morning through to Mora, through to Saturday afternoon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This, she's a very delightful little French bulldog, aren't you? Aren't you? Anyway, that's the kind of interruption I like. Is the French bulldog? So yes, it's it's these people just, you know, they seem to enjoy their work. I enjoyed their company. I enjoyed the physiotherapist getting me out of bed and making me walk round the top 
floor of the hospital because as you've had a large portion of your colon removed, everything has to, you have to move because everything's looking for a new place to be. So that's a very sensation, strange sensation when you, you've, you've got your, you've got your innards kind of rocking back and forth as you stumble around the, the top floor of the hospital. Oh, top floor of the hospital, close to it. But, um, Yes, and five days later, on Saturday afternoon, and I got lovely visits from a lot of people, and and uh, on the Saturday afternoon, they had to lever me out of that hospital, man. I was all up for staying on till Monday, just because it's good, it's, it's good cracking, good company, yeah? So that was the surgery, that's the surgery all done. Um, and now here we are, that was the 16th, this is now I believe, I think it's the 29th and I had my meeting with uh, Her Royal Highness Christina, the surgeon, yesterday and uh, you know, it's, it's, such a, it's such a funny thing because me and her just laugh a lot, you know well you have to once, once you can't not laugh with a person after they've done your prostate exam. It's the, the only thing you can do is, is there's a certain level of intimacy, let's say. Um, but she's given me the, the, the what would you say? We, she's given me the surgical all clear. Um, what else? Um, I've got to go and see the cardiologist because I've got a wee murmur. There's some small amount of chemotherapy coming up, and eh, yeah, that's all fine. Um, but it looks like I can get back to doing what I initially wanted to do with this YouTube business, which is get out into the countryside on my motorbike and go and find some coffee and drink some coffee and stay in some little towns and you know get back to doing what I enjoy and I've got the little bike the little bikes ready the little 200s ready so we're gonna go out and rip up some dirt roads on Saturday so surely I'll be boring you with that but as this video draws to a close I want to say once again what a joyful experience that you have all given me over the last three months by being so wonderfully supportive in a time of you know great difficulty and having the shiznits scared out of oneself um you've all been a pleasure um and I, and I say it in all the videos and I've, I've never meant it more that to send your wishes to somebody occasionally sounds like a trivial thing to do but when it kind of happens on mass i suppose it's a little bit like prayer you know if 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 everybody's trying hard enough for a positive in uh, income <laughs> hey positive outcome then I think these things make a difference and I think absolutely don't take it lightly when you say get well soon because um, it's a wonderful thing to do it's a wonderful thing to do and we should do it more and we should in general be a little bit nicer and I think that's the biggest lesson that I've learned from the wonderful world of cancer ownership is uh, just be 10% nicer than you were before because you got away with it. You pulled it out of the bag, man. You got the rabbit out of the hat and a lot of people don't. So you are all my darlings um, and I genuinely, and I don't say it lightly, um, you've all um, lifted my divine spark it's been a pleasure and the next time we see you it'll be out on the road
and that's what we want out on the road, man. Or the dirt track, even more so. So, the sun's coming down. I'm starting to lose the light. Love you all dearly. Thank you all so very, very much. Every last one of you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon.